Hello, everyone, and happy Easter. I am Pastor Ken. I'm so excited and pumped to be here uh, with you guys celebrating Easter. Uh, we're celebrating a little bit unusual than we normally do, but we are still going to have a great time. Uh, one thing I want to let you know before we get started is this is for everybody. Easter Jam is for anybody. Um, so teenagers, uh, you can get involved. Um, college students, this is for you too. Younger kids, you better get ready. We're going to have lots of fun. Um, moms, dads, buckle up. Get ready. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and it, so this is for anybody. The only way you can't have fun here is if you don't participate. So I want you to take a look around real quick and make sure nobody's missing. Make sure there's no brother is still in his room playing video games or, you know, you got to go find everybody and get them all involved, okay? So take a few minutes to go do that because we're going to get started in three, two, one. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Okay, so hear me out. There are two kinds of people in the world, okay? People who love these and people like me who can't understand why anybody would want to eat these. Um, you know, if they're cute and kind of kind of grainy. And uh, so, uh, so really quick, let's see what, what you guys think. Give me a thumbs up out there if you love these. Anybody thumbs up? Let me see. Okay, I see some thumbs up there. Okay. All right, now give me the thumbs down if you do not love these. Okay. Okay. Well, either way, no matter how you feel about these, you're going to love our first game. Okay. Our first game um, involves peeps. So your family is going to face off against uh, in the greatest peep jousting challenge ever. Okay. Be best peep jousting competition, okay? I'm going to explain how it works. Is everybody ready? Okay, so we're going to get your peep. Everybody should have a peep. You guys all have a peep, okay? So well, the first thing you got to do is divide into two teams. So however you want to divide it up, maybe you want to do, you know, boys versus girls. Maybe you do mom and dad versus the kids, however you decide to do it. Uh, just make sure there's two teams, and each team gets a peep, Okay. And maybe you want to decorate your peep a little bit. You can make some, you know, eyes or something on it. It can be kind of cool. Um, and also, don't forget to name your peep, okay? Uh, and you know what? By the way, if you don't have peeps, that's okay. Just, you know, any giant marshmallow would do fine. Um, but if you have the peeps, you can, you know, uh, you know, have some fun with it. Draw mustaches on it. You know, make it fun. This is, this is supposed to be fun. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our peeps for battle, okay? So we're going to take our toothpick into, and we're going to put it inside your peep, okay? So this toothpick is like your peep's, you know, you know, spear or sword or lightsaber or whatever you want to call it, whatever kind of battle you're having right now. Um, so it's going to be great. Um, and so we're going to put two of them in there. You're going to put them on a microwavable safe bowl, a plate, okay? So put them on the plate both facing each other, okay? Very important that both two picks are kind of touching, okay? And then you want to put it in there, and you want to start the timer for 45 seconds. Remember, only 45 seconds. And you don't want to leave it in there for 45 seconds. Trust me, it will make a mess. You don't want it in there for longer than 45 seconds, okay? You won't need it that long. Um, and make sure you guys are watching at a safe distance, okay? So, the way we know who wins, okay, the toothpick uh, that touches the other peep first wins, okay? So whichever toothpick touches the other one first wins. Does everybody think they understand? Okay, I'm going to give you guys some time to set up and do this game, all right? And then, I, then we'll be right back, okay? So let's get ready to joust. Okay, how did it go? Who won? I want to see pictures, uh, so put them up on Facebook. I'd like to see what happened and, and, and see how it went. Um, I, 
I, actually, it was a lot of fun. I think it was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but this is really great. And also, we, you might have made a little bit of a mess, but that's all right. No problem. Okay. So after that, are you guys ready for another game? Ready for another one? Okay. So this one, you won't. Uh, this one, um, you need laundry baskets. Okay. Everybody has a laundry basket and lots of socks. Clean or dirty, doesn't matter. Just lots of socks. Okay. Um, as long as they match, you have to have a match to the sock. So that's important. Make sure there's a match to the sock. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to grab those things and then press pause and then I'm going to explain the rest, okay? So really quick, go grab those things and then come right back. All right, you got your baskets and your socks? Great. Okay, now uh, we're going to choose two people to play, okay? You're going to have two people to play and you'll need two people to keep score. So maybe moms and dads, you want to keep score. Or maybe the kids want to keep score. You want to switch. Um, however you want to do it, it's fine. Um, to get started, I want you to dump all the socks. I want you to dump all the socks on one side of the room. All the socks on one side of the room, okay? And don't worry, those socks are going to make their way back into the basket. So again, if they're dirty, that's okay. They're going to get back in there. And if they're clean, of course, they need to get folded and put away. So they'll get back in the basket. Don't worry. Um, but uh, right for right now, they're going to be dumped out on the floor. Um, and then when I say go, the players are going to go and they're going to grab a sock and go through the pile of socks, find a matching sock like this, and then you're going to roll them up into a ball. Or maybe you'd like to say an, an egg. Maybe it's like an egg. Um, and then your, the object, okay, once you have it um, rolled up into the sock, um, you're going to toss it like this into the basket, okay? Okay, so the player with the most socks, the sock eggs in the basket at the end of the timer wins the game, okay? All right, so if you, um, if you don't have a scorekeeper, you're going to have to just be honest and keep count yourself, but I think we can do that, okay? All right, <clears throat> so that means... Everybody would be on the honor system if you don't have anybody keeping score. But if you do have somebody keeping score, we'll keep track of it. It'll be fun. Okay, so I need, if you need to, press pause right now to get everyone uh, in position um, and wait for the game. We're going to be right here, okay? So go ahead and push pause and get yourself ready to go. Okay, everybody ready? All right, here we go. We're putting a um, one-minute timer on the clock. The Easter egg throwdown is happening in three, two, one. All right, families, uh, come on back over here. Okay, all right, who won that one? Okay, I'd like to see some pictures of that game, too. That looks like that would, that would have been a lot of fun. Um, I, that was really fun for our family, too. We love throwing laundry around. That's, we do that every day, right? <laughs> okay, well, it was pretty wild. So whoever won, um, you know what? You, you get socks, right? No, 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 no. Maybe whoever won gets to put the socks away. No, that doesn't sound like a good idea. You know what, adults, just make sure that you have a good prize for whoever won. I think that would be a great idea. Um, so maybe, uh, you know, maybe they get to, you know, have a piece of the Easter candy or something like that. Just a, just a thought. Um, okay, uh, I hope you guys are having fun so far. We're celebrating here because today is Easter. Um, and if you don't know the whole story of Easter, that's okay. We're going to uh, get to that. But today, um, we're going to talk about what makes Easter more than just another day. 
um, <clears throat> it's a happy day. But before we get there, um, I know that you guys have lots of friends and family uh, that would love to hear from you right now. So um, I want you, and we're going to take a minute uh, to make that happen. I want to post up a few options for you. Um, pause the video, pick one of the challenges on the screen to wish your peeps a happy Easter. Okay, so I got like a bunch of text here, and so that, that was great. Uh, so happy Easter to everybody and all my family and all my friends. Uh, it's awesome. So even though we're celebrating a little bit differently, um, you know, we're not together, um, that's okay. You know, we can st Easter is still a happy time, and it's still happy. Um, and it's not just because of the peeps. Um, it's because the peep wars or the Easter basket or even the chocolate bunnies, all of that is great, but that's not what makes um, Easter a happy day. What makes it happy is the story of Jesus, and it's the most powerful story yet. Um, and yet it's also a very simple story, a simple story that be can be told with laundry. In the beginning... God created everything. He formed people in his very own image. But then, we turned away from God. Sin entered the world, like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds, and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him the religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him, but a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, It is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, Surely he was the Son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised the one who would rescue them, but now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days, but early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, 
do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return so we can live with him forever. Wow, that story. Every time I hear the story of Jesus and Easter, um, it always amazes me. I always think about the disciples and how um, at that moment when Jesus died, they, they lost all hope. Just a little while before Jesus died, he said to his disciples in John 16, 33, he said, um, in this life you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. And yet, you know, just a little while later, they faced the most devastating thing that had ever happened to them. It was the darkest moment in their lives, and they seemed to have no hope. But on that Easter Sunday, when Jesus rose, all hope came back. They had hope because Jesus was alive. And because Jesus is alive, uh, the simple fact that Jesus is alive proved who he was and proved that how much he loved, um, loved us. Um, so I want you to think about it this way. I can because Jesus is alive. I can keep loving because Jesus is alive. I can be brave because Jesus is alive. I can have hope because Jesus is alive. So here's what I want us to do. I want you guys to take a few minutes and add to this list of things that you can do because Jesus is alive. I want you to take a few minutes and answer these questions as a family. Um, how would you fill in this blank? I can blank because Jesus is alive. So we're going to pause the video discuss it for a few minutes, and then come back here. Awesome. I love, to hear, I love the conversations. I'd love to hear how those conversations went, because uh, remembering what God has done um, in the past helps me to trust him with what's going on in life right now. It helps us to know that we can trust him right now, um, I hope that that's true for you, and I hope that you spend the rest of the day making lots of happy memories. I want to take a minute, though, and, because if there's somebody out there, maybe um, a kid or a parent who, who doesn't know Jesus and hasn't um, asked him to be their Lord and Savior, I, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. Um, this is a, the most important, the best day to be able to ask Jesus into your heart, and um, we, we were talking about hope, and I, I want to encourage you guys to find the hope in Jesus now. So I, I have a, um, I'd like for you to pause the video again for a minute and just take a minute and talk with your kids and, and, and ask them about um, asking Jesus into your heart. Uh, there's a, um, a PDF on our Facebook page that you can use to guide the conversation. But I'd love for you, you parents to take a few minutes to talk to your kids about asking Jesus into your heart. This is the most important, important decision that they can make. And right now, you parents are on the forefront of helping them make this decision. Um, I am praying with you right now that that conversation would go well. And I'd love to hear how it went. So let's hit the pause button again and just take a few minutes and talk through that. Okay, all right. So we're back. Okay, I, again, I want to hear how that went. I want to hear if anybody um, asked Jesus into their heart. Please let me know so we can celebrate and cheer you on. Um, if anybody did accept Christ, I want you to know right now, heaven is cheering for you. There is a crowd of people that are just cheering you on, and it is, uh, it's like a party going on up in heaven. This is why it's a great day, because you accepted Jesus, and I think uh, we would just love to hear that and be able to celebrate that with you. Um, so as soon as this video is over, here's what I want you to do. I want you guys to go outside, and I want you to get dressed up in, you know, get dressed up or, you know, do, be in your PJs, however you want to do it. Um, but it can be a totally normal or, you know, I want to see some family photos. So you can, you know, be in your PJs or, you know, if you, you're one of those Easter families that dress up to the nines, you know, you got your, 
all the girls in the pretty dresses and the suits and everything. You can do that. But if you just want to be super casual with it, that's cool too. Uh, but I want to be able to see all these, all these pictures and, um, and see what happens here. So it's going to be, uh, I want to see those pictures. Okay, so no matter how you do it, I want you to take a family photo, make it awesome, and then I want you to share it with our Facebook page so we can uh, see everybody and, and see how, what a great um, Easter we've had, okay? All right, so now more than ever, it is time for us to celebrate and remember that God is faithful, okay? So I hope you guys have had a great time with us, um, and I hope that you guys are going to have a great and happy Easter, rest of your Easter. Um, so this is, uh, it's, as we do this last song, I just want to encourage you guys to have an amazing Easter, and we will see you guys soon. Celebrate, Jesus is alive